Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our educational video series where we are exploring the analytical um, features of Microsoft's Enterprise Endpoint Security Platform, Defender for Endpoint. My name, again, is Brian Donahue. I am a senior security specialist on the community team at Red Canary. I'm here again with my colleague, Joe Savini. Joe is the principal solution specialist. He specializes in Defender for Endpoint. So this is, I think, the ninth video in this series. Um, We've been releasing them in batches of three. Each batch of three focuses like one video on how you can sort of respond to, or I should say how you can triage and investigate alerts. A second set in these videos is how you can respond to them using Defender for Endpoint. And then in the third video, we sort of jump into more advanced uh, hunting queries and sort of talking about streaming data out of the platform and just sort of getting closer and closer to the data. So uh, this trio of videos is focused on a credential dumping sub technique called LSAS memory. Before we shot any of these videos, I ran an atomic red team test on my virtual machine. Um, that test used uh, an, a PowerShell session to launch run DLL32, run DLL32 called um, the COM SVCS DLL, which is a legitimate DLL, but it used this function of that DLL called mini dump. Um, these two things together are a set of behaviors that we very frequently see with adversaries who are dumping credentials. So that's exactly what that test is supposed to emulate. Um, naturally, if you watched the first video in this series, that generated a bunch of alerts because it is very suspicious. Um, in the last video, we talked about how you can sort of respond to those alerts. And now we're going to go through. Uh, and we're going to look at sort of the how you can structure advanced uh, or structure Custo queries in the advanced hunting console, sort of look for activity related to this. Uh, last but not least, uh, once Joe is done rooting around in the Defender for Endpoint console, we're going to jump into Red Canary and sort of talk through how we go about detecting uh, this activity using telemetry that we stream out of Defender for Endpoint. So without wasting any more time, Joe, why don't you walk us through how we can sort of build Custo queries? to sort of search for activity related to this test. Thank you, Brian. So this is the Microsoft 365 Defender view. Right now we're inside of an alert story. And this alert story has to do with uh, Brian being up to no good and, and running those malicious PowerShell scripts that he talked about. And the great thing about the alert story is that it's stitching all of that, uh, all of those alerts together into a timeline for us. And we see that there's a number of different alerts in here and they're all related to that. And Microsoft has classified them by their severity. Down here, we see there was some suspicious process discovery activity. That's when the script ran a Git process here. And it was uh, there's a reason for that. And we're gonna find that as soon as we dive into the command line information that we're then gonna use to create some awesome content inside of advanced hunting to find this specific type of attack. We're gonna kind of laser focus on that. Uh, so we see inside of, uh, just by clicking any of these alerts inside of this view uh, in the alert story, we can get more information on these alerts. Uh, but there's one particular section here that we're really, really interested in. And that has to do with, as Brian mentioned, run DLL 32. So when we click on this, we see that run DLL 32 is used. This is a file view. And then when we click on the alert that has to do with the process memory dump that's associated with it, we can scroll down and kind of see some of these, these uh, pieces of information, uh, including uh, some of the command line parameters that are included uh, with this attack. So uh, whatever was run on the command line at that time, uh, we get some of those details here and we're able to better understand kind of what happened and, and uh, reference that. And the cool thing is Defender breaks down each portion of it. So whether it's a file and you're looking to understand whether or not that file is legitimate or whether or not it's the file that it's creating or the DLL that it's referencing, all that information is available in here in detail in the alert story. But let's say... In our scenario, we've already done this and we know that it was bad. We understand that this file was created just like we have. We verified the presence of it using live response. And now we want to do just a broader sweep and better understand what instances occurred and when all inside of a single view. That's a great use case for advanced hunting. So let's pivot over there. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and drop in our query and we're going to run that query. And while we're running it, let's talk about each, each portion of this query and what it does and why it's important. So the first portion here, we're actually just looking at uh, the particular table that our, uh, that our information that we're looking to query is actually stored in. So 
device process events is where we're going to find uh, the command line parameters. So we're going to go ahead and select from there where our process command lines uh, can, uh, has any of the following. And the comm services DLL is definitely something that we're very interested in. Uh, and mini dump as a function of that is something that we're very interested in. So let's look at one of these examples. We're going to pick Brian's example and you actually don't click on it. You click around it so that you get, so that it'll pop up on your screen. Cause if you click on it directly, it'll bring you to the context view of whatever it is that you clicked on. So if we scroll down here, we see a particular record and what we're interested in is the command line that actually came off of this, uh, the search. So in this command line, we see it was run DLL 32 that was executed and called against this comm service DLL. So this is a legitimate uh, component of the Windows system. So this can be, this is something that's legitimate, but we don't see it being used very, very frequently. Um, you know, we've had exactly zero false positives in our environment. We query, you know, we have, this is a lab, so there's only a couple dozen machines in here. But as you can see, even just on test, test machines and dev machines and things like that, it's not something that's going to be that you're likely going to see. And in fact, if you start to query around for the mini dump function, you're going to go ahead and find a ton of like red team blog posts and everything, even way before you'll find any Microsoft like MSDN documentation on that. So this is one of those uh, living off the land type of techniques that is favored by red teams and is definitely highly suspicious, uh, uh, albeit even a bit esoteric on the Windows side, like i uh, never really heard of a lot of developers using uh, using this or, or and, and if you do, you'll know, right? If you have a lot of false positives, you'll definitely know, but it's not something that's likely to trigger that. So after that, we see a PID. Now this process ID is associated with LSAS and that was uh, the process that contains the credentials on the Windows machine. The deal with this is you can't always no, because that's dynamic, dynamically generated in the environment. So when the machine's booting up, it's going to go ahead and assign that process ID. So we we don't have a, a creative way to filter that inside of here. Like, and you remember Brian's script actually went ahead and ran a Git process ID so that it could it could populate this information ahead of time. Uh, but you know, for our sake, just scoping it to the com services DLL and mini dump is definitely good enough in order to give us the type of information that we're looking for, and then. We have the location of the dump file, which we have Windows temp here, and then we have full. Now, full it, it essentially means that it's a parameter that's going to tell mini dump and com services DLL that we want to write the entire process image to disk. So that in and of itself, uh, generally, like for debugging, it's usually like you wouldn't do that. It's a little wasteful because that's going to take up a lot of room, but it could be uh, an, a malicious indicator as well. So something to keep in mind. Now, once you run this, you have a couple different cool things you can do inside of advanced hunting. You have some information here. Um, you can change the chart type if you want to present that. This information is a little bit flat. I think it works a little bit, you know, it works best like in the table the way it is. You can export this to a CSV if you want to get it inside of another system or Excel. It just did it for me. So that's pretty cool when you click it. Uh, another thing you can do if, if you're interested uh, in tying this in is when you actually open that context view at the top, there's something that's called take action. And very similarly to if you're creating a custom uh, rule where this is going to be evaluated uh, every so often, however you specify, this action will actually allow you to dive in and specify if you would like to, for example, like isolate a device when this, uh, when this query becomes, when a query runs or executes, or if you want to restrict app execution on those machines. So it's a pretty powerful way that you can actually pivot from a hunting scenario to a response scenario, all within the Microsoft 365 Defender console. Uh, another way you can do that is leveraging the Red Canary Portal platform. And Brian's going to walk us through a couple of those scenarios, what it looks like inside of the Red Canary Portal, and then probably some basics on how to respond there as well. As we've said a few times already throughout this video series, uh, Red Canary actually uses that advanced hunting console to um, parse raw telemetry out of Defender for Endpoint and into our engine where we then um, parse that telemetry against sort of our own library of thousands of detection analytics. So uh, what you're looking at right now is what we call a confirmed threat detection. So one of our detection engineers, this was a few days ago when we, when we ran this test. So Back when we ran this, one of our detection engineers saw this event pop up 
looked at it, started investigating the telemetry that had come in, the command lines and everything that we were just sort of looking at in Defender for Endpoint. They see all that in, in the Red Canary portal. They investigated it. They immediately recognized, hey, um, this is adversary emulation. I know this is Atomic Red Team. I can, I can tell this is an Atomic Red Team test. So they wrote up a detection timeline for us that I'm going to walk us through right now. So uh, the first things we see up here, right, like this is the highest level, kind of the headline of the of confirmed threat detection. This is actually a static um, to save them time, they have a static response that they put in when they see an atomic red team test, and it's this course scripting sentence you're seeing right here. Um, so, for a more unique threat that you know maybe is just suspicious or like that they've never seen before, you would get a more descriptive explanation of what they're actually seeing. So, as we scroll down, right, we've got this information here about uh, MITRE attack mapping. So um, included in the MITRE attack mapping are the actual detection analytics that triggered on the Red Canary side to create an event to then get investigated by a detection engineer. So as you can see, there are one, two, uh, just two, right? So this uh, win run DLL com SVCS mini dump is, is mapped both to LSAS memory and to run DLL 32. Um, this is where I like, we've done a lot of attack mapping work around here. Like I always like to reiterate that the, the, mapping to attack is, is as much of an art as it is a science. Um, and there's always a bit of ambiguity. And in this case, I think it's totally appropriate to have that, uh, that, that behavior mapped back to run DLL and to, uh, to LSAS memory. So as we click on these, right, you can see the first detector, uh, it identifies instances of that, that Windows DLL launcher, launching utility, run DLL 32, dumping process memory um, using that mini dump function of commsvcs.dll. Uh, so really the, the detector that we have on our end, um, Joe and I just sort of, well, Joe mostly, Joe just sort of built that detector out in a lot of ways in Defender for Endpoint. So effectively, this detector is looking for a process that is run DLL, launching in conjunction with a, a command line that includes that mini dump function. Um, this works fairly well at scale. Like we, we don't see a lot of false positives with this. I'm sure we see some. We'd have to talk to the detection engineers about that. So it may require tuning to, to make that work really well, depending on how big your environment is. So scrolling down, we see here the detection timeline. Um, a lot of this is sort of preliminary activity. We see Windows PowerShell here. Uh, if you recall, I ran this Atomic Red Team test in uh, an elevated PowerShell session. So you can see here, we've got the command line just as PowerShell and the detection engineer who investigated this event noted that the absence of command line par parameters um, sort of suggests that this was an interactive PowerShell session. Of course it was because I ran it myself. So then we've got the threat occurring right here. Uh, and that is at the point where run DLL is, is launching this comm services DLL and using this mini dump function whoop, and using this mini dump function here to then go ahead and create this LSAS dump file, right? You, you probably recognize this. We were just looking at it um, in the Defender for Endpoint console. Again, this is just the metadata uh, confirming that that is legitimately run DLL 32. Um, so there you have it. Uh, that's kind of what you can expect to, to get out of, the, uh, out of the Red Canary portal here. There's also a variety of, of sort of automate actions, like, like automations that you can build and playbooks you can build so that like at the point where this threat's detected, you could set up a rule that sort of automatically isolates an endpoint. Um, but that stuff's kind of out of scope for this video series. Again, um, I've said this a few times as well, and you, you may be wondering like, you know, we got this alert in Defender for Endpoint. What's the point of having it here too? And as I've said before, there's kind of a variety of, of useful reasons to have a service like Red Canary on the back end of it. Um, the one that's most important to me or most interesting to me, I should say, is that you get you get this greater defense in depth, right? You've got all the ways that, that Defender for Endpoint is doing prevention and detection. And then you've got our sort of highly curated library of detection analytics that are cared for by a team of like, many, many, many um, very smart detection engineers. On top of that, like you just watched Joe go through all the reasoning and sort out why he thought that um, that sort of alert that he was looking at in Defender for Endpoint was malicious. That all happens on the Red Canary side with us. Like we've got a, th that team of detection engineers, the ones who are writing these analytics are also the ones who are investigating these events. Um, so when you get an alert from, from Red Canary, I should say, I shouldn't call it an alert. It's because it's not an alert. When you get a, a confirmed threat detection from Red Canary, you are 
pretty pretty well assured that that is in fact a confirmed malicious or suspicious threat. And then last but not least, you, you get services on top of that, like incident handling that can help you sort of sort out like, okay, I got this alert, what do I do now? Um, so I think that is basically all we have for the LSAS video series here. Uh, we, we are gonna do, we're hoping to do another trio of videos and we're trying to very intentionally pick something that is a little bit more um, devious, I guess you could say, a little bit less conspicuous, I guess is the better way to put it. So far, we've chosen tests that are very obvious and that we really, really, really wanted Defender for Endpoint to catch. Um, for the next one, we might try to do something that's a little bit more inconspicuous um, so that we can sort of try to navigate through in a space where maybe we don't have alerts that are so obvious and so easy to sort of work through. Um, so you can expect those sometime after we drop these videos. Um, otherwise, like I recommend going and checking out the masquerading trio of videos and the scheduled task trio of videos if you haven't already. If you have any questions, reach out to us on Twitter, find some other way of reaching out to us. Um, once again, Josephini, thanks so much for walking us through this. Thank you. All right, and uh, we will see you guys in the next trio of videos. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.